opportunity to bring the word. And for those of you watching at home, let's celebrate our online viewers today. Let's celebrate them. Hallelujah. Woo. All right, I know how we're going to do this in a short period of time, but God is just good. Isn't God good? Come on, look at someone as I just want to worship. There's something about worship. Just worshiping God just serenades him. Hallelujah. I've been deputized to talk today about a topic titled, You Can Do It. Look at someone and say, you can do it. Say, I can do it. And this month we've been talking about hundredfolds. Pastor Namdi did a great job last week talking about don't settle for less. And he also laid the foundation to say, a hundredfold is not necessarily a hundred times more. Um, a hundredfold is reaching that maximum potential that you have in you. Verse 5 of the scripture we read, the Lord says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. In other words, God speaks to you and I from the position of completion. Y'all remember, I think it's 2008 when Barack Obama was, President Barack Obama was running for election and he said, yes, we what? That was his slogan. That was his mantra. Now, he wrote on that until he won the election. But how much more we, children of God, that we're not even basing our own instincts on natural things, but then on the scripture. Say, yes, I can. Yes, I can do it. So we're looking at this scripture. I'm going to try to run as fast as I can. The first thing that God wanted us to do, or the first thing God wanted to do was to have Jeremiah take the limits off his mindset. Now, amongst other things, the greatest factor that can hinder you from entering into your hundredfold manifestation is you, not the economy, not the facts on ground, but you. Now, when I look at that scripture, if you look clearly at that scripture, what I see here are the battles of the eyes. If you look clearly, the battle of the eyes. There were two eyes in the equation. Jeremiah's eyes that spoke about being a youth, but God's eyes spoke about being a deliverer. Jeremiah's eyes spoke about him saying, listen, I am afraid, but God's eyes spoke about him being fearless. Jeremiah's eye professed that he could not speak, but God declared him a prophet. Whenever we're at the brink of a new endeavor, there's always a perpetual conflict between two authorities and modes of thinking. The authority of God and the authority of man, which God will never override. Constantly. The two choices. The authority and mindset of God and the authority and mindset of man. No one in the book of Revelation 3.20, the Bible says that, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears and what? Opens the door. Or open the door. Now I understand that limits can be as a result of previous experiences, past failures, fears of the future. Obvious disadvantage when you are standing neck to neck with the competition. But I make bold to declare this morning that the limits have limitations. Did you hear that? Your limits have limitations. They have a limited time span and only exist for as long as you want them to. Your limitations only exist as long as... Have you ever woken up one day and said, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to behave like this anymore. So there's a time limit to your limitations, but what a lot of us do, we just let the limitation just go. We have to stop thinking and saying, I cannot, I will not, I may not, I am not good enough, I have tried, I have failed, I won't, I don't, I can't work, I am incapable of, I am restricted to, I am not permitted to, I am not comparable to, I am not, not, not. That is the Jeremiah's eye. But God is saying, yes, you can. Now, I don't know what business you've started. I don't know what walk with God that you're aspiring. Yes, you can. You know, it was funny on Mother's Day, when my son went to school and they, he wrote something down and, and they asked him in class, what, you, what's your mother's favorite words? What does she say to you at most, uh, most of the times at home? You know what my son wrote? He said, mommy says that, don't worry, Zion, all will be well you can do it so when the boy grows up and he believes that he can do all things through Christ that strengthens him is because of a foundation that has been laid 
Now the second thing that God was letting Jeremiah know was that he understood Jeremiah's concerns. Nevertheless, it's crucial to recognize that our perceived limitations does not limit God. Our perceived limitations does not limit God. Jeremiah 1 8 says, Do not be afraid of your faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. But this is funny because Jeremiah said, I am a youth. But God was saying to him that, Listen, the people you are about to meet will be far older than you. So God knew. The people that you are about to meet will be far older than you. So when I send you to them, do not look at their faces. Ooh, that's why I like Victoria Renzi. She sang a song and permit me to sing it in vernacular. She says, I get back, you know. She says what? I know they walk alone. God understands, or rather he understood that Jeremiah would go into terrains where he would see the faces of people that would scare him. And so he says, don't look at your face, at their faces. Don't ever look at the numerical strength or experience of others to make a decision. You can do it. The system will be far older than you. The experience will be far older. Their success stories will be far older. As a matter of fact, the success stories will be so intimidating. Have you ever gone into maybe a business or you're trying to get into a profession or you're trying to start something and you talk to someone that seemingly looks like he's made it and they begin to tell you the successes they've made and the price that they've paid. Then you begin to doubt the God that you have. God knew that. God knew that. Now we need to understand that as long as the call of God is upon your life, the call of God is older than any system. The call of God is older than anybody's experience. The call of God is older than any challenge. That's why he told Jeremiah, said, listen, before you were born, I knew you, I formed you. Do not let anybody's experience limit you. Do not be afraid. Isaiah 54, 4. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. Now, just like Jeremiah, God wants you to know that in your natural disposition, you may not have the capacity. But what is about to happen is going to be done through a spiritual disposition. It will be done by spiritual intervention because the spiritual, when the spiritual comes to you, the supernatural, you can do the impossible. Now, when I was preparing for this message, I found it hard to draw the balance between speaking God's word and speaking motivational words. Because we all read books, right? We, we listen to podcasts. We, we talk to people. So there's a very thin or fine line between what God is saying and what any Joe, an average Joe, is saying on YouTube. And sometimes we wake up in the morning and we listen to this podcast. We, we read these books, which they're good, by the way. But, but one thing I found out that that's only one piece of the puzzle. That's probably one piece of the puzzle, which was the piece that Barack Obama took. There's a supernatural dimension to it. So that's why a lot of times when we start certain things and we don't finish or we don't complete it, we begin to wonder, but, but, but I thought I, I did my research. I thought that I spoke to this person. I, I gingered myself up in the morning. I, I wrote things down. I carried things around and I, and I spoke the words. But, but what God is saying is that, listen, I'm going to teach you spiritual warfare. Now, if you look through verse 4 to 10, up until verse 10, God was saying, listen, my eye versus your eye. You know, like Jeremiah said, well, I'm a boy. I'm a youth. God said, listen, you're not a youth. I'm going to make you a prophet to the nations." But Jeremiah was starting to understand that, listen, how can I be a prophet to the nations when I have not even taken care of my constituency? I am not a, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a senator. I'm, I'm, I'm not in the house. Neither am I a governor. But how do you want to set me apart to lead nations? And God said to him, I'm going to teach you spiritual warfare, which is what we want to spend time on this morning. In other words, in order for you to achieve these great things, there are things that you need to do. When you go to a nation, because I'm sending you to a nation, and that nation could be anything. 
verse 10 the first thing that you need to do is to root out pull down destroy throw down thereafter you can begin to build and plant so you see why a lot of us go into certain things and they don't work out because we've done everything but we have failed to follow God's prescription and now this is not it's not an exhaustive place God's gonna be talking to you about something and look this is what God revealed to me you got to pull down root out destroy throw down before you begin to plant if you don't completely root down pull down and you begin to plant or build the enemy might allow you to build and plant but it will become unsustainable because the things that you don't completely pull down root out or destroy will come after what you have built or planted so quickly what are we supposed to root out in order for us to do what God has called us to do the first one is bitterness offenses envy all right we're quiet now this is not a motivational speech anymore there's a spiritual dimension to this numbers 1 1 now when the people complained it displeased the Lord for the Lord heard it and his anger was aroused so the fire of the Lord burned amongst them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp you cannot want to start something good and you have bitterness anger envy jealousy now we're sharing with pastor a little while ago I it was something very personal to me and I couldn't really understand why it happened someone I loved so much I still do love the person and the person had just had something against me for at least maybe 15 years and I had no clue and this person is supposed to be a minister as well so one day we had a conversation and I was just telling pastor how do you relate with people like that and you know you have to relate with them fast forward many months later I had the opportunity to sit down with that person and the person brought out a list true life story and began to say in 2008 you did this in 2009 you did this um, you did this you did this you did this now I wanted to react but the Holy Spirit said keep quiet so this person listed everything I had done and the first thing that I said was, I am sorry. So you need to learn not to defend yourself. Because by the time you start defending yourself, you open the door for the enemy. Because then you start finding a reason why, can, why, why is this person thinking of me like this? Then you begin to get into arguments that do not glorify God. Little did I know, I mean, I've heard some of the stories of how bad this person has been going through things in life. And this person came and this person was crying and everybody in the room were crying. And I was the only one staring because everybody had something to say. At the end of the day, I said, are you ready to forgive me? Oh, the person said yes. And they realized that everything that held against me was not true. But this person had suffered for about 15 years. This person had tried so many things for 15 years that did not work out. Now we had a conversation and in a week, within a week, something that God has, the person has been believing God for, came to pass. Without fasting extra fast, without doing extra night, which all because the person what? Forgave. So you cannot say you want to build and you hold offenses. And that's why God wants us to root it out. Job 14, 7 to 9 speaks about when the tree is cut down, but at the scent of water, it will sprout again. So don't cut it. Don't cut it. Go to the root of it. Number two, the second thing that God wants, to do is to, wants us to do is to pull down strongholds that have held us bound. 2 Corinthians 10 4 for the weapons of our welfare are not kind of but amount mighty through God to the pulling down 
of strongholds. So there are things that are called strongholds that are holding us bound. That it doesn't matter how much motivation you give yourself in the morning. Sometimes it doesn't matter how much scripture you know. Those are strongholds. They, they hold. Have you seen those anchors that, that pull the ships? I mean, maybe Mommy Shadi has seen one, a lore of the sheep that holds it to the ground. Those are strongholds. They hold you so down. And sometimes no matter how much you pray, Number three, the God wants us to destroy the things that may hinder the growth of what you're about to do. Isaiah 10, 27, and it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away off thy shoulder and the yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So that's what God wants us to destroy. We're going to pray in a minute. Number four, God wants us to throw down. That's according to Jeremiah 1, 10. Throw down what? imaginations that are not of God. The Bible says casting down imaginations and anything that exalts itself highly against the knowledge of God. So you and I are about to go into an endeavor. You know God has called you, but then we begin to imagine, what if I fail? What if I don't get that loan? What if I meet someone in that interview um, and the person is better than me? What if the Bible says you need to cast down imaginations. You need to cast down imaginations. You got to cast down anything that exalts itself higher than the knowledge of God. If not, we're going to keep going round and round in circles. So yes, we can do it. Yes, we tell ourselves we can do it. But I start to think, why did God categorize the four together? Pull down, destroy, uh, pull down, destroy, uh, 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 what else, what else, what else? Um, root out and throw down the first four. He grouped them together. Then the second two, after doing all this four, then you can begin to plant. Let's close our eyes this morning. We might not have covered everything we wanted to talk about or I wanted to talk about. But I know that for some of us, we are possibly struggling. We're caught in between a pillar and a post. I want you to close your eyes this morning as I invite the pastor. There are two things we're going to do. If you've not known Christ, I mean, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and are living every day by the words of some writer or some book you read that I can do it. This, this formula does not work. This prescription does not work. So with a quick show of hands, if you want to have Jesus into your life this morning, because without him, you can't do anything. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ. There's a Christ factor. For you to enter into your hundredfold, there's got to be a Christ factor. For those of you watching online, say, Lord, just come into my heart. Transform my mind. I'm tired of running this race alone. As I invite the pastor to lead us in a series of prayer on these four things. I felt it strongly in my spirit to lead us in a series of prayer regarding these four areas that we possibly are struggling to because some of us have done all we can the bible says having done all to stand stand Ephesians 6 but we haven't pulled down we haven't rooted out begin to talk to the lord this morning